through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 177. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of The Born Legacy, mm, this Friday, mm -hmm. August 10th, mm -hmm. we're talking about Jeremy Renner. Yes, we are. Kind of big shoes to fill there, taking yeah. over for Matt Damon, but we're mm -hmm. going to sort of look back on Jeremy's career yes. as we think forward into what mm -hmm. terms, you know, The Born Legacy might be. It's true. Yeah. So let's start way back at the beginning, a film that I suspect you've never even heard of probably not uh one that i actually have seen Whoa. but didn't even really put together that it was jeremy renner okay until we were looking back on this okay and that is national lampoon's senior trip yeah never seen that it is it's sort of one of the many direct to videos I, it was probably direct i actually don't know if it was direct to video as mm. far as i know it wasn't mm. but it was one of those national lampoon movies that was sort of like an accessory mm -hmm. film where it really yeah. didn't have to do with any of the stuff the other major yes. sort of films did. it's not a college movie yeah. it's a high school movie mm. it's no characters that you've seen before or gotcha. ever since um it's about a high school that goes to washington dc okay. i believe on their senior trip and mm -hmm. you know all the hijinks that ensue gotcha. and the hijinks are led Road by trip plus high school yes the hijinks are, are led by um, a couple, you know, sort of stonerish kids. Okay. One of whom is Jeremy Renner, playing a character named Mark Dagnostino. Okay. Or Dags. Dags. Nice. Essentially, you like he's, Dags. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, he's playing a stoner in a film that also stars Tommy Chong. Oh. <laughs> Take that for what you will. <laughs> it's kind of funny because he was sort of like. In thinking back on this movie, you mm -hmm. know how they talk about babies having like a baby fat? Yes. I kind of feel like he had a, like a baby fatness mm -hmm. to him where he was sort of like a little bit chubbier. Yeah, the young pictures of him, he definitely had baby face. Like he do he wasn't like a slim down, mm -hmm. like ripped <laughs> man. He was sort of like a stoner who probably mm. rolled into this movie because they're like, <laughs> you look like a stoner, dude. Like, I think that's probably You probably fair. eat lots of Twinkies. I mean, look at that face. Look at how many chins you've got. I'm not saying he was fat, but he was certainly a little plumper. Mm, okay. Um and it's it's I mean it's 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 not a great film. Mm. It's it's sort of like an American Pie directed video kind yeah. of release. You know, it's got a I'm few. I'm so funny surprised moments. by how we've never heard of it. And oh, oh I've, I've never heard of it. Heard of it and oh, I've somehow heard of, seen it. I've seen it at least a, a couple times. I think on like Showtime or HBO or something. You know, it's one of those this things. This guy. Yeah, it's National Lampoon in the name. I'm like, I'll watch that. Yeah, I'll admit it's a little foolish, but mm -hmm. it's okay. I got to say, it's directed by Kelly Macon. Might not be a household name, but dude directed a bunch of the Kids in the Hall okay. episodes. Interesting. He also directed the movie, Brain hmm. Candy, ah, as well as, uh, let's see, Mickey Blue Eyes, the, what's that name, um, Four Weddings and a Funeral? Oh, Hugh Grant? Hugh Grant, yeah. Gotcha. Hugh Grant, f faux mob comedy thing with oh, James Gunn. Oh, yes. And he did, he's done a bunch of TV work, so the dude's been around, you know? Okay. Just saying, you know, okay. if you've got a directed video ish type release to watch, there are worse ones than this. Mm. It's not, it's not the worst thing all, in the world. There are also better ones than that, probably. Yes. In terms of acting, though, mm -hmm. it wasn't... And the last one was in 95, to give you okay. sort of perspective. Wow. Okay. In terms of acting, though, it wasn't until 2002 in which yes. Jeremy Renner really started to get people's attention mm -hmm. by his titular role in the film, Dahmer. Dahmer. Mm -hmm. We're talking the Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Uh, biopic? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say it. Yeah, it's a biopic. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> In terms of the world of serial killers, mm -hmm. I I would argue that there's probably a very short list mm. that are above in, Dahmer, <laughs> above or in the same conversation mm. of the most prolific or famous serial mm. killer Prolific's of all time. An interesting word to use, but famous definitely. Yeah, he's not the most <laughs> prolific, but you know, you think maybe him, Ted Bundy. I mean, mm -hmm. who else is more John Wayne Gacy? I just don't maybe? like using the word prolific in relation to serial okay. killers. Okay, <laughs> like he's, it's an art that they're working on. Well, to, to also That's, be fair, there are true. people who kill way more than him. Like yeah. Bundy killed like four times as many yeah. people as him. So we're not going to use prolific. But in terms Either of way. like notoriety, how yes. about that? There notorious, the most notorious mm -hmm. serial killer. Yeah. He's got to be easily in the conversation, Definitely. if not the number yeah. one. Because Cannibal, man. Cannibal. Yeah. People remember Cannibal. Yeah. I mean, he is... Calm Cannibal. He's one of the inspirations for Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Him and John Lane Gacy. I mean, or um, um, what's the guy's name that... 
that took people's faces. I, I forget. I, you know, I but, that was John Wayne Gacy. No, John Wayne Gacy was the one who raped and murdered mm. the boys. It was the oh, yes. it was That's the, the one way right. back in the day. I know yeah. the one you're talking about. Like, Either way. Yeah. Um, somebody can write in and mm-hmm. tell us how stupid we are. <laughs> we but we're talking about Dahmer. Um, we're talking about Dahmer. And you know... It's weird to sort of think about like a sympathetic portrait, but and I won't even so go so far as to say it was sympathetic, but it adds sort of a depth to mm. Dahmer that you don't really get beyond um, that you just don't really want. Well, or <laughs> just like there's the notion of a cannibal, and everyone just sort of gets to that and stops. Yeah, like there's nothing more than just him mm. being a cannibal, and he was murdered in prison. Like that's all anyone knows that's about true. him. And so yeah. to actually explore. Like his childhood, or like, the childhood, how he became the monster mm-hmm. that he became. I'm not saying that they explain away in a, a, yeah. a, a fashion that makes it acceptable, but an interesting perspective yeah. on it. It's sort of like you know, I've always I, I was sort of like when they remade the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I was mm. like, I don't necessarily want to see a new Nightmare film, mm. but I'm interested in sort of the origin story of Freddy Krueger. Gotcha. And this is sort of like that. Okay. And granted, that film was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> this is much better, but more in sort of like a disturbing and creepy manner. And Jeremy Renner does an amazing job as a disturbing and creepy hmm. man who is one of the most notorious mm-hmm. killers in American history. So yeah. I guess <laughs> good on you for that. Eating I guess. People. Yeah. Brains seriously. in the fridge. I don't think it was really until 2003 mm-hmm. and SWAT That's right. that I really knew I Jeremy Renner as like a person. Yeah. Not to say that like he doesn't exist before yeah. then, but it wasn't until like I'm like, oh, it's that guy, mm-hmm. and I finally was like Jeremy Renner. Mm-hmm. Like I knew Jeremy Renner as a name, yeah. and that and I was that like, oh, he was the, the guy from Dahmer yeah, and stuff okay. like that. And it wasn't necessarily because SWAT. Uh, it was good because it wasn't. It was okay. You know, I don't mind SWAT. I'm gonna I'm gonna argue in favor of SWAT being okay. You know, it has a lot of people I like in it. You know, uh-huh. I like Colin Farrell. It's probably one mm. of the better Colin Farrell action films. Sadly, uh, you know, I like Samuel <laughs> short Jackson. List. Yeah, it's short list. I like Samuel Jackson, Michelle Rodriguez, mm-hmm. and LL Cool J were pretty badass in their small supporting Isn't this roles. A remake of a show. It is a remake yeah. of a TV show. Mm-hmm. And you know. Uh, Jeremy Renner sort of plays the villain in it. Okay. In essence, like, uh, it, Olivier Martinez is a drug dealer in the movie, and he's That's sort right. of the big villain, but he gets arrested, and in essence, Jeremy Renner, a former SWAT guy who's kicked out for being too rogue, mm-hmm. goes to him. He's like, he, he offers a billion dollars mm. to Not break him enough. free, and Jeremy Renner happens to be one of the competent folks <laughs> to do that task. Gotcha. So it, it ends up being, you know, Colin Farrell versus his former SWAT partner, Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Renner. And Jeremy Renner's slim, he's athletic, mm-hmm. he's tough. Like, this is the first point I was like, okay, that dude's kind of badass. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, I definitely appreciate him becoming an action mm-hmm. star. Yeah, it's so sad that it took him, you know, almost a decade yeah. to get there. Because this, like, whereas Colin Farrell sort of flirted with action stardom. I mean, he's in a lot of action movies, yeah. but he's not in a lot of good ones. Yeah. Jeremy Renner has had a lot more success in terms yeah. of his action Definitely. career. Granted, most of it's Pretty more recent, recent. Yeah. but you know... But still. But still, yeah. It, success is still success. And I, I, I would still argue that, you know, uh, SWAT is not that bad. I think it's kind of maybe a guilty pleasure, but I still mm. enjoy it a, a moderate amount. And, you know, it... uh had one of my favorite awards when I was looking on IMDb. Okay. The MTV Movie Awards. Oh, no. Mexico edition. Apparently, he won Best Colin Farrell in a Movie. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Best Colin Farrell in a Movie. Yeah. That's... Uh, Apparently, Mejor Colin Farrell en un peliculo... Peliculo? Peliculo? Wow. I'm just going to say wow. I'm like, assuming that there must be some sort of translational issues, but that's what IMDb had it listed as. <laughs> Best Colin Farrell in a movie. Oh, I, wow. hope, I hope Colin Farrell would win that award. I would hope so. I, I, Unless there's some other, like, <laughs> fourth-string Mexican actor, Colin Farrell. Yeah, who knows? Change his name to Colin Farrell. <laughs> maybe, maybe there is, yeah. and we don't oh. know. 
<laughs> but one of the things that's that you ridiculous. mentioned off camera that is mm-hmm. incredibly true is that Colin Farrell is largely a product of the recent. Yes. Starting with Hurt Locker. Colin Farrell, you mean? Uh, Jeremy Renner. Yes. Jeremy Renner yes. is largely <laughs> a product of the recent, mm. starting with the Hurt Locker, because ever since the Hurt Locker, he's gone gangbusters. Yes. And I mean, obviously that makes sense, since that was, you know, Academy Award nominated, yes. all that stuff. Definitely. But, like, his career starts... It's in... also a pretty big and good movie, even outside of what its sure. awards were. But you like... think about this, like, Senior Trip, 1995, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hurt Locker... 2008. So for those 13 years, he's essentially done a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then since 2008, he's done like tons of noteworthy projects. So to say that, you know, the Academy Awards don't have any value, clearly this proves that they do. And hmm. does it though? (laughs) In terms of money and success, Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. If if that's the conversation we're having, it's always going to win. Yes. So So anyway, The Hurt Locker is obviously the story of a bomb diffuser. Diffuser. Diffuser, I don't know what the diffusal problem. expert yeah. in Iraq during mm-hmm. the, I don't know, what is it now? Iraqi freedom? No, I don't remember what. Whatever, whatever the current called. Iraqi oh, war. Second Iraq war, probably. Yeah. I, I don't I, know. Like, you know, the first one was the Gulf War. Uh, yeah. You know. Do, do we not have a clever name for this one? If not, we should start working on that. I yeah, feel like. Probably this. I think it's the second Gulf War. Might be what it was. Uh, it's got to be some like Iraq, Iraqi Either liberation way. or something. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. Jeremy Ryan plays you know sort of like the rogue bomb diffuser. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, he doesn't play by he plays by his own rules, yes. Yes, which you know dan- lives life a little bit dangerous. Which in the real world is probably fairly absurd. I can't imagine the military. Being willing to put up with the shenanigans that go on in this movie. How far he pushes them in the movie consistently, yes. But maybe like a couple times in his career with individual people, I could see it happening. Because he does a job that nobody wants to do and he's good at it. So once you get in that place in the military, that's when people can have serious attitudes. Because they have a good reason to be where they're at and this is one of those movies that you know goes full throttle mm-hmm. the entire way because oh, yeah. you're expecting you know when you're dealing with bombs you're expecting things to go off the entire time mm-hmm. like it's sort of like was a blowout the john oh. travolta film mm-hmm. um where you know you're dealing with you know impending bomb attacks yes. and stuff like that where you're constantly on hyper mm-hmm. alert and um you know it's it's one of those things, I, I guess blowout isn't really bombs, but you're dealing, <laughs> you're dealing with imminent threat, yes, essentially, okay, my point enough. being. And, you know... Yeah, it just starts, turns the octane up to right, spe- right from Especially the when you know you have Guy Pierce as sort of mm-hmm. like the precursor to Jeremy Renner, who dies during a bomb attack. And yes. sort of like, who is Spoiler. next? Yeah, I mean, it's the first 10 minutes. Like, I'm willing to spoil that. Um, and it's been out. It's been an Academy know, Award I, nominee. If you haven't seen it at this point... I'm just, you know, I'm just messing with you, yeah. Spencer. Don't well, worry about you it. You do that a lot. I do. Um... If you haven't, I mean, it's one of those things that's sort of like, who's going to be the next one to yes, die? Like, yes, definitely. And that's sort of the the whole, entire movie. The whole movie. Yeah. And it's 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 tense. Like, yeah, it's and, very you know, tense. This was sort of the Academy Awards, whereas this or Avatar, where yes. you have like the big budget film and the mm-hmm. little budget film. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think... I think the Herlocker is a fascinating film I in a lot too. of ways. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily the most realistic film. Grand Avatar is not realistic at all. <laughs> at this point, maybe a hundred years there will be. <laughs> but you know, since when realism enter as a picture, of Spencer? <laughs> it's, it's it's just very well executed for mm-hmm. what it is, and the performances it, are great. It's not based on a book or something, is it? I think it's based on an article. No, I think. Okay. But uh, way, you know, it was not made for. Like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Academy Awards. It won six of them, including Best Picture and Best Director for is, Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, isn't Catherine Bigelow like James Cameron's ex wife or something? She is, yeah. That's what made it even more <laughs> yeah. interesting. Uh, she also directed <laughs> you, Point Break, so yeah. I got special appreciation for that. Uh, sadly, one of the ones it did not win was Best Actor for Jeremy mm-hmm. Renner. That award went to Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart, Ooh. which. I don't know if I necessarily... I mean, I like Jeff Bridges. Oh, I think he deserves the Best Actor I award. Do I don't know if Crazy Art's the one necessarily to give it to him for, but, you know... It was a good movie, though. I'm not I'm not going to lose my shit he over pretty, this. He was really good plus, in it, yeah. so, I'm not going to lose my say. shit. But, yeah. So, something to think about. Mm-hmm. Next up, you know, he went from one Academy Award nominated performance yes. to another. The Town, oh, 2010. Man. I love the movie. Yeah. I think it's great. You know, Ben Affleck's directorial debut, I believe. No, he had done Gone Baby Gone. Oh, that's at right. That point. That's right. You're so right. this You're was right. his s- sophomore performance. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, 
I, I, th- I think, you know, uh, at least I'm in the Ben Affleck fan club. I am too. You know, I think he gets a lot of flack, but I think he's an immensely talented guy. Mm-hmm. And I think the town proves that not only can he direct, but yes. he's still a great actor. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Jeremy Renner, it's funny that he got a supporting actor nom. I mm-hmm. think he was very good. I kind of felt like he was a little over the top in the movie, actually. Mm. Um I think he's. I think it's necess- his character's over the topness is so necessary right. for I, the, I, 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 to I, keep the tension in the film. And I think I think that's a valid point. Mm-hmm. But you know, in, in terms of the things I think back on the movie, I don't necessarily think of him first. Mm. Like I think Ben Affleck's great. I think Re- was it Rebecca Hall's relationship oh, yes. with Ben Affleck was great. I love John Hamm as the FBI oh, agent man. pursuing them. You know, Hamm. and then like the shootout at Fenway. Mm-hmm. Park are all just amazing, yeah. amazing sequences. It's, it's. I mean, you know, it's a classic cops and robbers mm-hmm. sort of taut thriller, and it's just reminded me a action. lot. I, I know this might amaze some people, but it reminded me a lot of Heat. Mm-hmm. Like I could like both the yeah. high charge, sure, the like totally. semi, I can see that. you know, the realistic, realistic uh, robbers, you know, and the the back and forth between the lead robber and the lead mm-hmm. FBI guy, you know, yeah. that's I mean, it's 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 a great. Film. And I think I, he adapted the screenplay because I know this was a book as well. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. is that a shock that Ben Affleck's a good writer? I mean, shit, no. he's won an Academy Award. That's for That's what it. I was thinking when I thought it's not this his direct directorial uh, debut. It was the fact that he wrote the screenplay and directed and starred. Yeah. So. I mean, hat trick. Well, there's there's a few other people involved as well, but you know, he's won a fucking Academy Award for writing. Dude is talented. Yeah. You know, let's let's leave it at that. Yeah. And you know, uh, Jeremy Renner again, mm-hmm. always playing a bridesmaid, a, kind, never a bride. <laughs> playing a kind of a crazy badass. But like, he nominated for a supporting award. Mm. Happens to be the same year Christian Bale was in The Fighter. Christian Bale. Not not gonna be Christian Bale in The Fighter. No. I'm sorry. sorry. Unfortunately. You're not. You yeah. see how crazy thin he was? You're just yeah. not going to... You got nothing. I'm sorry. We want right. you to, but you, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, we all of these have been examples of Jeremy Renner sort of in moderate action mm-hmm. films. It wasn't until last year, yes. Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, yes. that he really sort of elevated his stature in the world of mm-hmm. action films. Like, now we're like, going toe-to-toe with Tom Cruise. Yeah, not only, off, yeah, just not only that, but I mean, Mission Impossible is one of the biggest mm-hmm. action franchises at this point. Yeah. I mean, the last one made almost $700 million. Jeez. Um, but you're going... Toe to toe with Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. There's speculation that he was even going to take over the yes, franchise that's right. I remember them from Tom about Cruise. That, yeah. At this point, I think they pulled back on that, mm-hmm. and that might not be the case. Especially considering the Bourne. Well, he's got two other major yeah. franchises, much like you yeah. know, much like uh, Ryan Reynolds. He's, yes. he's attached to so many major action <laughs> franchises at this point. It's almost unrealistic and honestly like you know i liked him in mission impossible mm. but i still i just i think it's tom cruise's yeah. franchise like it's tom cruise's ethan, baby ethan hunt is like mm-hmm. the heart and soul yeah. of of mission impossible and we can talk about this in regards when we get to born mm-hmm. and his replacing you know jason mm-hmm. born uh, yeah but Matt like it just it feels weird to think about you know another crazy imf agent mm. who's always there to save the yeah. day it just yeah. it feels like a little much and i just i kind of like it with tom cruise as yeah. like i don't mind it i like i like i like tom cruise having like a gallery of side mm-hmm. characters working them like simon pay oh, yeah, being simon a recurring Pei. character mm-hmm. who was worked with them you know ving rames did it for several mm-hmm. years slightly disappointed that he didn't have a bigger part in this one but simon Pegg is a fine understudy mm-hmm. if you're gonna go that way <laughs> or you know he uh I, I just like people like that yeah. who repeat interviews and his like team yeah. who work with them. I don't mind him doing that again mm-hmm. or something of that sort. I doubt he'll take it over. He's got too much on his plate now. He's got too much on his plate, and I think and Tom Cruise I, will never give it up. I don't know. He's, Tom Cruise is getting kind of old. I mean, oh, but I, I think he'll try to do it again or let it rot. I don't think he'll let it. But you know, this is arguably one of the most successful ones. You mm-hmm. know, got financially, you got yeah. Brad Bird. Mm-hmm. Of the Incredibles doing and uh, Iron action. Giant doing his live action one, uh, who did an amazing job directing. You have J.J. Abrams producing again. Mm-hmm. You know this. I mean, you could argue that this is the best Mission Impossible. Probably. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I probably think probably not much of an argument. I, I, th- I think I think you might get some for number three with J.J. Mm. Abrams directing. And I would even argue number one deserves some conversation because that's uh-huh. it's apples and oranges in terms of genre. But mm-hmm. you know, it's. It's definitely in the conversation as the best one. So yeah. you know why why drop it when you've done so well up to this point? Yeah, exactly. He's so gonna hold on. I, I I think it's I think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. 
So if last year wasn't big enough with Mission Impossible, which was the end of last year, let's note, like oh, yeah, December, right, yeah. mm -hmm. December 2011. Yeah. This is this is how frantic his career is at this <laughs> point. May this year, The Avengers comes Boom. out. And not only is The Avengers, you know, the biggest comic book film ever yeah. since surpassing The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. It's like number three of all time. Yeah, also. I think so. Behind like the last Harry Potter and Avatar. No, I think it's Harry, uh, Avatar and Titanic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, nice. it, I mean, I'm, thinking, maybe I'm thinking opening weekend type, oh, okay. st type sure, stats. Sure. Sorry. But, you know, not only is that gigantic, yeah. which is cool, but in a lot of ways, The Avengers is the Hawkeye movie. Like, you know, mm -hmm. how all the other characters yeah. had the, their story before The mm -hmm. Avengers? Hawkeye and Black Widow, this is, in yeah. essence, their movie. Especially since Hawkeye has such a character arc in it. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he starts out good, he's brought over to the villain mm -hmm. side, and then he has to go back to good. Mm -hmm. Like, is he really... redeem himself, then yeah. he full-on becomes part of the team. Yeah, you know, it's really... There's a really a whole story in his relationship with Black, Black Widow. Widow. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot going on there, and, and it's really had, interesting. He had the biggest shoes to fill, because... He even though Black Widow hadn't had, obviously, a whole movie, she had a semi-substantial part in Iron Man 2, yep. especially compared to his minor role in Thor. Mm, really, he has yeah. that, like, really, like, they only say Barton. They don't even call him anything else, and he's just, like, that one scene. Well, he goes up in, like, his hawk's yeah, his, nest yeah. to where he's most comfortable mm -hmm. during the scene where Thor's trying to get the yeah, hammer to get as the a refresher. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, so I, he had a lot huge amount of shoes to fill in that sense because he didn't. He had, I mean, Mark Ruffalo, yes, as coming being another Hulk. Sure. But the Hulk character was already so established that it's not like people need to know the Hulk. But Hawkeye, I mean, people were literally so dumb that, that people thought he was the Green Arrow from DC, like mm. young kids who had no idea. They were like, "Who was Bowman? Yeah. Who was like?" And you know, it's. I mean, I will say, in the Avengers, I, I, I he was one of my. But favorite parts. Mm -hmm. I liked him a lot, but at the same time, he has the tough uh, aspect of being a ground character. Mm. So, like, you know, yeah. you've got Hulk, Iron Man, and who else was there? Um, Thor. Mm -hmm. We're flying around in the sky battling, yeah. and you know, you got like Black Widow, Captain America, and, and Hawkeye, Hawkeye on the ground. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they're they're doing lots of inner stuff. I think most of his interesting stuff was prior to that mm. in terms of like his villain to hero uh, redemption yes. arc. But, you know, I, I still I still very much enjoyed him in the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of neat to just remember in that fact that in the end, Cap, Black Widow, and uh, Hawkeye are basically the mortals there that don't... I mean, I guess Tony Stark has just money as a power, but it's just funny to realize yeah. that they're all, like, just agent, soldier-type people. Like, so of course they fight on the ground. Yeah. They're just really well-trained. Yeah. Uh, interesting note, though, I mean, obviously, we love Joss Whedon. Oh, yeah. Don't even Great need movie, to talk about amazing that. Amazing like, action. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, this is funny to me. Mm. So, Avengers has come out May. Okay. Not a lot... I mean, you can't have awards before then. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a year before it's even possibly yeah. nominated for any Academy Awards. But it was nominated for some Teen Choice Awards already. Oh, of course it was. And check out these nominations Teen and let me know awards. what is missing or what is <laughs> not. Um, number one, Chris Hemsworth won uh, male star, okay. movie star. We uh, have uh, it, the movie itself won action adventure category. Okay. We have nomination for sci-fi movie for the movie. Okay. We have uh, actor nominations for Robert Downey Jr. for sci-fi. Okay. Scarlett Johansson for sci-fi. Okay. Chris Hemsworth for sci-fi. Uh, male star Robert Downey Jr. I know male where this scenes to her Chris Evans. <laughs> Hissy fit Mark Ruffalo. Female star Scarlett Johansson. Oh, Villain Tom Hiddleston. Oh. What? <laughs> Amongst all those nominations, do you see left out? I'm gonna say the least recognized actor and character from the movie Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner. <laughs> Isn't that sort of sad? Every other person in the movie is nominated for like acting, but in an acting action. It's Teen Choice Awards. Even still, Teen like, Choice Awards. All of them. Teen is, Choice Awards. Is Jeremy Renner not lovable? I is think that Jeremy Renner might be happy. He's like, oh, thank God, those kids aren't no. all up in my shit. I I think he deserved to be at least nominated amongst <sighs> all of them. How can you leave off one member of the team? It's a team. There's they should about, all be. It's like Rudy. Nothing about Nick Fury in there. He needs to like everyone needs to lay down their jersey and be like, I want I want Jeremy Renner to get nomination. No. no. Come on. Come on. Work with Not me. with Teen Choice Awards. I'm sorry. Or Teen Spirit or whatever it's it was. It's Teen Choice. <laughs> teen Spirit. That's, <sighs> that's a Nirvana song. <laughs> yes, that's true. I was thinking Indie Spirit, Teen Choice, <laughs> Frost Pass. Anyway, moving on to this mm. Friday, August 10th, mm -hmm. we have The Bourne Legacy. This is the fourth film in the series. Yes. The first without Matt Damon as Jason mm -hmm. Bourne. Also, I 
believe the first that's not based on a book because like the first yep. three were based on I believe there's three born books yes. if I remember and correctly. Robert Ludlone is mm-hmm. dead yes so he's not writing anymore but rest in peace but pour one out for you Robert this film is written and directed by Tony Gilroy who was responsible for screenwriting the first three Bourne movies. Uh So if you want a sense of continuity, Mm -hmm. there is that element to it. Also, with Matt Damon gone Mm -hmm. is Paul Greengrass in terms of direction. Yes. So it's probably not going to be quite as much handy, shaky cam as the previous two. Please pull back so we can see what's going on. I I didn't like getting seasick on the third one. Yeah. yeah, And I don't get seasick. (laughs) It also it also introduces, you know, some villains like Edward Norton, Mm -hmm. who's presumably, you know, like a tread stony type Mm -hmm. villain like the other ones. I I think out of all the ways in the back to the conversation with the Mission Impossible, you know, if all the ways if you're going to reboot but continue a franchise going by by not necessarily rebooting but replacing the main actor and main star, main character, I think the way that they're preparing to do or that they've shown in the trailers that they're doing it for Born Legacy is really one of the only ways you could do it. And it's kind of interesting to say in a society in a government program where they have it set up to have a bunch of these trained assassins in Treadstone to be these trained assassins that all work by themselves that in the first movie he runs into a bunch and kills a bunch of them that there would be others yeah. out there that you may have not heard of. I mean it's 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 definitely fair. I Especially mean Especially based on the fact that it starts at the during the Born like uh the Born Ultimatum. Yeah. This I movie mean it starts during the third movie. It definitely in time. Is not implausible that it could exist mm-hmm. like this, but to me Again, I just much like Mission Impossible, I feel like if you have Bourne in the name, it mm. feels just weird to not have Jason Bourne in the movie. Not how they're specifically using it. The Bourne legacy. It's the, it's the legacy the, of Jason Bourne. It's the b- legacy of what he did and what left was, was left behind yeah, by him. I mean, after, that's the whole thing is, is, okay, regardless of whether or not the movie itself will be good or not. Uh, the idea of like if they've done as much crap as they did to catch Jason Bourne by the end of the third sure. movie, they're not going to treat his okay. character, what, Aaron Cross... Lightly, they're okay. not gonna fuck around to like be, they did to be in the first fair, movie. But don't you think the notion that they're like, oh, there's someone even more badass than Jason Bourne? I don't know if it's kind even of like more badass. They say that basically in the trailer. The one like, person thought, says it. You think he's crazy about Jason Bourne? Yeah, because they want to make it seem cool. Of course, that doesn't. But you know what? When you're dealing with crazy lone assassins, how do you really compare them to each other? Do they kill people and get away? Yes. Okay. Then they're equally but as good. Do you think like <laughs> think about just logistically? This government, one government program, mm-hmm. was so messed up that there's like these two ridiculously badass people who they are unstoppable Mm -hmm. against like it just i i've heard rumors that they might even do another matt damon jason Bourne movie and i I kind of matt damon said it Mm. i still don't highly doubt it'll ever actually come out matt damon saying yeah that'd be cool i'd like to do it doesn't mean there'll be anybody else that wants it's true but maybe they'll tag team them together i don't know catwoman saying or ryan hathaway being like i'd do a catwoman film if everybody else was on board so basically i wouldn't say no is what she's saying (laughs) maybe they'll put them together or something like jason Bourne and they're like high five you know (laughs) fuck treadstone i don't know anyway i think it'll be cool i do too and i like ed norton i'm i like ed norton i like jeremy renner uh you know i like I, I, I mean, I think Jeremy Renner's good in the role. I, I still like think Hawkeye Rachel is my. Yep, I think Hawkeye is the the action franchise I'm most interested in mm. of Jeremy Renner's. But you know, I'll give this a chance too. I mean, yeah, they're giving it. A, I just think they're uh, whether or not it's plausible. Because yes. obviously, the Bourne right. identity story in the beginning wasn't necessarily plausible. Right. But let's just say if it's plausible, I think of all the ways to make it a plausible, not a different character continuation. The way they did is at least intelligent rather than mm. stupid. It's not sure. like, no, it's Jason Bourne's younger brother who we yeah. trained everything we knew, but we never knew about it. You that know, it's not true. anything like that, which they are totally willing to do a lot of times in that film franchises. Okay, I'll give so, you that. Okay, I'll give you that. Thank you. Um, so let's know your thoughts mm-hmm. on Jeremy Renner. I mean, I'm, we're fans of him. I think mm-hmm. it's fair to say. Definitely. We suspect you probably are too, though. Uh, and join us next time for our DVD rundown for the mm-hmm. week of August 14th. Mm-hmm. And as always, you can check us out on MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, uh, iTunes Blip, Miro, Roku. Check in. Get glue. We'll see you next time.
stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all.